welcome to this video with new stories from Ethiopia and Somalia. Uh, firstly, Somalia, where at last Hamza Abdi Bare, newly elected Prime Minister of Somalia, has finally succeeded in forming a cabinet. Uh, while I am recording this video, uh, names of cabinet ministers are being announced. One controversial selection is that of Mukhtar Robo. Former deputy commander of Al Shabaab has been appointed as Minister of Religious Affairs of Somalia. Secondly, we have uh, a new story for you about UN Inquiry Commission on Ethiopia, three member commission which arrived in Ethiopia around a week ago. Before the arrival of this commission, Tigray government released a statement. The commission has not visited Tigray so far. The commission was tasked with uh, investigation into human rights abuses, uh, violations of uh, humanitarian law, refugee law, committed during Tigray conflict since its start on uh, the 3rd of November 2020. Today, the commission released a statement. What is it saying about uh, access to Tigray and other areas uh, which the commission has not visited so far? Thirdly, we have a new story from southwest region of Ethiopia where uh, some students have been expelled from a university, Bonga University and Romo Liberation Front. Political party today released a statement about these students. 54 were expelled there yesterday. And lastly, we have a clip for you of Kimant fighters. Kimat ethnic group members, Agos, uh, have been fighting in the Amhara region of Ethiopia for years. During TDF's military offensive on Amhara Afar, we saw renewed clashes between Kimat ethnic group members and local Amharas and Amhara forces. And thousands, uh, thousands of Kimat group members have been displaced into uh, Sudan and South Sudan. We have a clip for you showing Kemet fighters. It seems that uh, uh, Kemet fighters are organizing themselves along OLA and other rebel group lines. Uh, firstly, a new story from Somalia where at last uh, Hamza Abdi Bare, Somalia's Prime Minister, has formed a cabinet uh, in consultation with President Hassan Sheikh Mahmood. Uh, names of the ministers are being announced while I'm recording this video. The next video will have a detailed look at uh, the numbers, how many members, uh, uh, how many ministers uh, are part of this cabinet. One controversial uh, selection which has been confirmed is that of Mukhtar Robo Al Mansur. Two days ago, we reported that Mukhtar Robo could be a minister at Hamza Abdibare's cabinet. Who is Mukhtar Robo Al Mansur? He is a former deputy commander of Al Shabaab. He worked as spokesperson of Al Shabaab to one of the top commanders of Al Shabaab. But in 2016, he defected. He surrendered to Somalia's government. And in 2018, he tried to contest election uh, for the uh, president of Southwest Regional Federal Member State of Somalia. Uh, against Lafta Garin. He was not allowed to contest election. In 2018, he was arrested and put under house arrest. Nisa, uh, Somalia's intelligence agency, put him under house arrest in Badwa city of southwest region. Since then, he remained uh, under house arrest, but now new government uh, is in power, Hassan Sheikh government. 
and Somalia's intelligence agency is now being led by Mahad Salad. Mukhtar Robo is out of uh, uh, house arrest and now he is a minister, minister of religious affairs. So just uh, uh, around eight years ago, he was leading Al Shabab and now he's minister of religious affairs. Uh, how is this selection being seen? Uh, can Mukhtar Robo prove effective against Al Shabaab? Because uh, Hassan Shea government's uh, announced objective is that it will counter, it will contain, it will wipe out Al Shabaab. Can Mukhtar Robo play a role in this fight? Or is his election a controversial? Uh, that depends how reformed Mukhtar Robo is. Is he really reformed? And uh, how deep does he want to involve himself in the fight against Al Shabaab? He can prove effective because he knows how Al Shabaab operates. He was a top commander. So, if he wants to lead this uh, fight uh, from the front, he can prove effective. Uh, and secondly, yes, you need voices which are anti-Shabaab, religious voices in Somalia. Al-Shabaab uses uh, religion's card uh, in Somalia. So, Mukhtar Robo can prove effective. Uh, but another question is, what about his crimes? Uh, he was a deputy commander. And he, while he was deputy commander, he was spokesperson back then. Al Shabaab carried out several attacks, killing civilians. Uh, and will he be exonerated uh, before his uh, nomination as minister? And uh, will this selection of Mukhtar Obo set a new Precedents that uh, Al Shabaab fighters, no matter what they do, they can surrender and then they can be part of the government. So, uh, several questions. Uh, it, it depends upon uh, how sincerely Mukhtar Robo wants to fight against Al Shabaab. Let's see. Uh, secondly, we have a new story about UN Inquiry Commission on Ethiopia, which arrived in Ethiopia five days ago, around a week ago. It was a five-day visit from the 25th of July till the 30th of July. The commission has concluded its visit. The commission uh, has been tasked with investigation of human rights abuses violations of humanitarian and international refugee law committed during Tigray conflict since November the 3rd, 2020. The commission, three-member commission, arrived in Ethiopia. It held meetings with Demeke Mekonnen, a deputy prime minister, interministerial task force with uh, Ethiopian National Dialogue Commission, civil society organizations, NGOs, uh, journalists and others and after that the commission has released a statement. The commission did not visit Tigray. Uh, instead, it issued a statement urging all the people who, all individuals, groups who have uh, information about atrocities, about human rights abuses, that they share these details with the commission. Uh, the commission now is asking Ethiopian government that the commission must be given access to the areas where human rights abuses were committed. This meeting mainly, this, this visit of the commission mainly focused on interpretation of the mandate of the commission. Modalities were discussed, how the commission wants to operate, to which areas this commission wants access. The Commission has shared its point of view with Ethiopian government. Now, the ball is in the court of Ethiopian government. Ethiopian government has not declined or accepted Commission's request to travel to Tigray or other areas. Uh, but Commission in this statement says that it will require unhindered access to the areas 
where violations of uh, law, where human rights abuses were committed. Let's see, will the government uh, give access to this commission to Tigray, to Western Tigray, Volkai, Sagade, that remains to be seen. But commission has made it clear that it wants to travel to Tigray, to Amhara, to Afar, and it wants to start investigation, it wants to meet survivors, it wants to meet witnesses, and it wants to interview them in public and privately as well. Commission has shared its concerns, its uh, demands. Uh, let's see, will Ethiopian government grant access to this commission or not? That remains to be seen. Thirdly, we have a new story from southwest region of uh, Ethiopia. Uh, the region was created last year. It was part of uh, SNNPR. Now it is Southwest Regional State of uh, Ethiopia. There is a university in this region, Bonga University. And yesterday, some reports were shared that 54 students were expelled by university authorities. And today, Oromo Liberation Front political party led by Daud Ipsa in the Oromo region of Ethiopia released a statement. The party says that uh, university's decision to expel 54 students is ethnically motivated because the students are ethnic Oromos. And these ethnic Romos protested, they demanded, quest they demanded answers to questions regarding the death of a student. A university student of Bonga University was found hanged in university premises. Did he commit suicide or was he killed? The students protested, uh, they asked questions about the death of uh, that student first year student of the university and uh, resultantly 54 Romo students have been expelled by the university authorities. Details have not been shared by Bonga University. Why were these 54 Romo students expelled? What were uh, their crimes? What did they do? Were they involved in any violation of law? So this expelling of students uh, is being seen as uh, uh, an action which is uh, ethnically motivated because they are Romo students. Well, uh, we don't uh, have the details available. University authorities have not shared details so far. Bonga University must clarify why were these Oromo 54 students expelled from Bonga University. Lastly, we have a clip for you viewers uh, showing uh, Kimant fighters. Kimant is part of Ago. Ago ethnic group members live in Tigray, Amhara, uh, Eretia as well. And these Kimant fighters have been fighting, Kimant group members fighting against uh, Amhara forces for years. In the Amhara region of Ethiopia, there have been on and off clashes between Kimat group members and Amhara forces for years. During Tigray conflict, when TDF was in Amhara for regions last year, we saw renewed fighting between Kimat group members and Amhara forces. And some say a Kimat group members supported Tigray defense force close to Gonda. There was heavy fighting. And after that, TDF retreated and Kimath fighters, they had to retreat, they had to leave Ethiopia. And uh, thousands of uh, Kimath civilians as well, they have fled into neighboring countries. In Sudan, there are thousands of Kimath ethnic group members who have been displaced from the Amhara region of Ethiopia. These Kimath fighters uh, are starting an insurgency like uh, OLA, uh, has done like other armed groups uh, have done. They've been fighting for years. It's not something new. Uh, but they're trying to organize themselves uh, like other armed groups. Kemet fighters, uh, uh, they're not uh, thousands in number. 
but now they are trying to form alliance with other uh, armed groups like Romo Liberation Army and like TDF and Gumas fighters. And in Sudan, reportedly, these groups, uh, these armed groups have been seen together. Sudan, South Sudan, both these countries share border with Ethiopia and some armed groups are operating on the soils of these two countries. That is why Ethiopian government officials, uh, uh, you must have heard them in statements condemning Sudan, that Sudan is backing arming uh, armed groups of Ethiopia because Kemet fighters uh, and some say OLA fighters and uh, Tigray fighters, they are operating on Sudanese soil. Watch this clip showing uh, Kemet fighters speaking in Amharic language. Thank you for watching.